Okay, let's see if we can get through this in just one take here. Uh, first off, elephant in the room, you may notice that this is not in fact your watch. The reason that I am using this guy as a stand-in is because it is the same module, uh, but a different kind of watch body. And the reason I have this watch is because originally I intended to get you this watch, right? And I guess you could have this one if you'd prefer it, but I think the other one's a lot more, uh, a lot cooler. Uh, you know, this one I got like, what did I say? Like more, more than a year ago or something. I just thought oh, it'd be cool. Uh, essentially this has, it's kind of a, like a generally cool watch, but it has one feature that I've probably already revealed to you by the time you're watching this video that really sets it apart from like any other watch in existence. And I'm a nerd about timers and watches and stuff. So I thought, oh, I'll get one of these. And it was just, it's worked out, it's worked out. Um, and actually, so there's two watches that have this one particular feature. There's this one, right? Which is my demo watch, which the buttons are easier to press on. And also I can kind of get it all grubby with my fingers without messing up this one, which is uh, this watch here, which is the one you're actually getting, the Mud Man. Yeah, look at that. Oh, kind of gorgeous in a retro Casio kind of a way. And just for the record, this watch essentially does not exist in this condition anymore. Uh, there, there are actually some different color variants, and uh, you, but I'm, I'm getting off track. Doesn't really exist in this mint condition. I've had like an eBay alert for a while and I was just kind of keeping an eye on it. And one time, even it was in Kentucky and this one popped up and I was like, wow, that one looks pretty good condition. And so I was like, all right, we're pulling the trigger. And I got this one and it is perfect. I don't know what happened. Uh, it sat in a drawer, who knows, but uh, yeah, it's, it's probably many years old because they haven't sold it for a while, uh, but it is just perfect. Got it for a great price. Normally, well, yeah, def definitely like several several hundred mint condition otherwise i mean technically this one didn't come with the tags but um they get expensive especially those rare color ones i was talking about there's like a there's a weird orange one and like i think there's a purple one yeah but this is this is the most common one uh but again still really hard to find it in that mint condition so super excited that i found this guy um there it is just one more time here and then we're actually going to use this watch for the purposes of explaining all the features because I believe they are all, I, I think they are completely identical. They might be slightly different, um, but they are extremely similar. I think, I think literally exactly the same. Okay, so let's get into it then. Here's the watch. You've got your four buttons on the side and the one button in the middle here. You may have noticed, or I probably have told you, that it is solar powered and multi-band six. That means it receives radio signals from a bunch of radio tower things that are set up. Like the United States has one that does coverage for the whole US. Europe has one, Japan has one. Um, I think there's six of them, which is why it's called multi-band six. This is how these atomic clocks or whatever receive like accurate time every like night. Um, and yeah, so it's also, also it's solar. So you never have to change the battery or get in there. You just leave it near a window to charge it. Um, just general tips. It's, it says like it kind of can recharge from like lights and stuff or just generally getting some light, but it is so much more effective. Like it takes minutes to recharge or to compensate for a day's energy use in sunlight as opposed to like indoor lights takes like eight hours or something just to just to keep up with the daily timing uh, energy. So definitely recommend occasionally giving it a little time by a window. Uh, you know, I literally just set it sideways at the window, kind of pointing out towards the window, gets all the good sunlight, or you know, if you wear it enough and are outside, then it'll probably just charge itself like that. Um, and then as far as the atomic time, let's get into that as the first feature. So you look at the face here, You've got, well, it's gonna be different on the one you actually have, but basically the same thing where we got the day of the week, month, uh, day of the month, time, and some other labels here. Now, if we press this bottom right button here, we're gonna go into the time getting mode thing. And so basically this little, this little blank spot right here, which the other watch has as well, there's sometimes a G logo right there. And that's like for G-Shock. This is also, by the way, it's like a very durable. This is the G-Shock brand, I don't know if you know. And it has like, this one's 100 meter water resist, the other one's 200 meters. So it's like good to go for any kind of water or anything, just super durable watches. But anyway, they get that G logo whenever they have gotten a time signal for the day. 
And so generally it's going to remain accurate for like a month, but the G tells you like, okay, this thing is a hundred percent ready to go and super accurate. Um, and so let's see, cause I actually forgot in the course of making this video exactly how to manually sync it. But the beauty is you don't have to manually sync. What you can do is you can put it, um, they say, they say 0.12 o'clock out the window. So kind of like maybe this or whatever, it probably doesn't matter that much, but you can experiment and see what works, but it needs to have a shot at the sky and then it sinks best at night because radio travels farther at nighttime for some reason. Um, but yeah, it tries like six times between like midnight and 5 a.m. to find the time signal. And, you know, if it has a shot at the sky, usually it would probably get it. There's actually apps that you can download that will sync the time. I don't know what kind of sorcery is at play, but I've tried them and they work. You can like put it into the sync mode and then you can start the app and it like, I don't know, emits sound, I guess. And somehow the watch picks up the sound and that's like, it sets the time for the watch. Uh, it's pretty magical. Um, but yeah, so if you wanna, if you wanna set the time uh, manually, like make it search for a signal manually, uh, let's see. Well, you know what? Yeah, okay, here we go. Uh, so you get into the receive mode, pressing this button, and then hold down D. Oop. Or, well, really, I guess just hold down D. And now it's doing its thing. It'll give you like a s suspected signal level. There's that G logo, so it turns solid when it gets a uh, reception. See, I'm holding it over here, not really near the window, so I just have L1. I believe the signal gets up to L3 or something like that. Um, but you don't have, oh, there it is, there's L3. Uh, and then it takes like two minutes and then it'll beep at you when it's gotten a signal. Uh, and then once that's successful, it this updates. So it tells you the last time that it got a signal. So September 20th, I just did it testing a second ago and it tells you the time and the date that it last got the correct signal. So that's when you're on the main time thing it will toggle between that and uh, yeah, that's just your like mode to update and get the manual time. Great, okay, let's keep going here. When you press the top right button, when you're in the maiden mode, you can cycle between showing the day of the week and the month and the date or the day of the month or showing a second time zone. And then up at the top there is the actual time for the second time zone. My second time zone and my actual time zone right now are the same time zone, so this lists just the same time twice. Kind of pointless in this current setup, but you can show two time zones on the home screen that way, or on the main screen. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I believe, oh, okay, forgot about this. There's the middle button. Pretty much all the time the middle button does uh, like a luminescence thing, which you can't see very well, because I have, there you go, you can kind of see it. Um, cause I have the, um, like flash on, on my camera, but that's your luminescence thing. Press it and it lights up or hold it. And you'll see bottom right there, there's going to be a little, see how that, there was one little thing that says a.el that when you hold it in, turns on automatic light up when you tilt it. So whenever you tilt from like level to 40 degrees, uh, it turns on the automatic uh, thing. So it's kind of like an Apple watch where it lights up when you automatic or automatically lights up when you point it at yourself. All right, let's get into it. If you hold the top left button, now we're into the settings and you can pick once you, once you've held the top left button, now you can use these right side buttons to scroll between like up and down to scroll and pick your city. NYC bottom left button goes over to the next option which is the daylight savings. You see daylight savings flash in there. You can turn it off on auto. Nope, oh, you got to toggle just with the bottom one. Auto, hit the bottom left button to toggle again. We got 12 hour versus 24 hour there at the top. Hit the bottom again. Now we can reset the seconds, which you don't want to do. Uh, but what you can do is, ah, oh, shoot, that wasn't the right button. Okay, hold the top left, bottom right, bottom right, bottom right. And now that we have seconds selected, the top right button here, when the seconds are flashing, actually turns it between 
uh, the backlight staying on for 1.5 seconds or three seconds. You can pick how long you want the backlight to stay on when you press the button, or I think when you raise your wrist, uh, or maybe it, maybe it's just for button press, but so this is the lower setting right there, so that's good. One other thing, if we hold the bottom left button, let's do that, uh, oh, spoiler. Durr. See if I can get it to do it. There it is. Top left, a little icon just turned on. Now the buttons for the watch don't make a noise. Um, if you prefer that. So you just hold the bottom left button. All right. And yes, spoilers there. All right. So, hands are getting sweaty here. Whew. I've spent too much time on just the freaking home screen, but that's the basics. This button here will take you to the sync settings and you can just hold it and then it'll manually sync, but otherwise point at a window in the daytime to get sunlight and point it at the window kind of in the nighttime to get a time signal. And it should do the time signal syncing automatically. Um, yeah, this one's a toggle between world time and, and date stuff. And this is your settings. Top left is always sort of the settings button, so you can change some settings about the watch. And then the bottom left is the mode button. Oh, and, and then you got your light, of course. And then bottom left is the mode button, which when pressed toggles between all of the different modes. Hoo, hoo, hoo. There's a lot of them. All right. I'm going to skip rally for a second, save best for last. Uh, and that one. Uh, this is the world time. We can, once we have world time selected, scroll up and down, and this is our second world time. So I'm gonna go to like say UTC time. Uh, you can look at the manual because you can turn on like, uh, you can turn on um, like daylight savings and stuff like that, but I'm not gonna mess with that. And now you can see when I'm on the main home screen thing, I can now show UTC time up at the top, which is handy. Uh, so let's go back there, Oop, past it. WT. The other neat thing is whenever you want to go back to UTC, if you hold both of the buttons on the right, or not hold, just press them, and it'll take you back to UTC, no matter where you are. All right, alarm. I'm not going to dwell on this one, but you hold the top left, and that lets you set the time. And at the top right here, this is a really quirky, really Japanese thing. Uh, you can pick the month and the date that the alarm should go off, or you can leave either of those blank. And so that gives you four possibilities. You can have, if you only set the month, the alarm will go off uh, every day for that month. If you set only the date, the alarm will go off every, like every, like if you set it to 15, it'll go off the 15th of every month. If you set the month and the date, it will go off like, if you set 9.15, it will only go off on, you know, one day of the year, September 15th. Uh, or if you set none of them, it's like a, like a daily alarm kind of thing. So it's real strange mode. You basically end up having, you know, like you can set uh, like a rent reminder, like a monthly rent re reminder that goes off every month. You can set a... Um, you know, like a birthday reminder, which only goes off once a year. You can just leave both of those off, which is like a daily alarm, which is, you know, that makes sense to me. I don't know what the heck the one month alarm is for. If you only select the month up there, I, it's just such a quirky, weird thing. You can have it alarm every day of one month. I don't know. It's madness. Uh, but anyway, you can toggle through. This is your settings. This changes the mode. And so to toggle through the alarms, you would go through this one. And you have five or four, 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 four alarms. And then the snooze alarm, snooze alarm lets you snooze, uh, but otherwise they work similarly. And then once you toggle, you see OF there, you can turn it on with the top left or top right button, turn it back off with top right, snooze, turn it back off because it turned itself on while I was messing with the settings. And this last one here, SIG is the signal. Uh, so you can just pick between on and off for that which is, do you want it to chime on the hour? Uh, every hour it strikes, which is another weird little setting, but like it kind of helps you know when the hour starts or whatever. Um, but yeah, leave that off. Uh, all right, that's alarm, stopwatch, pretty straightforward on this one. 
you can start it, bottom right to start, and you can stop, and you can start it again, and you can reset with the top, uh, top right button. So start, and I don't know, are there other options with the stopwatch? I don't think, it's a pretty simple stopwatch. Uh, I think of them will keep the hours up at the top there. Oh, it does have split time. So if you click the top button while the timer is running, now it has like paused the time so you can read it, but actually the time is still like ticking in the background. So like if you have two runners running a race, uh, okay, the first runner finished the race in like 10 seconds. And now that I have that written down or, or I memorized it, now I can hit this button again and I see where the, act where the timer is at now. And then I can take split time again and see, okay, that runner finished in that time and you know click this button again and then now i see the you know it basically keeps the timer running in the background but pauses so you can see the time whatever it's kind of neat um but um yeah i think you can also let's see yeah so you can even like pause the background timer while you have split time on so now the background timer is not clicking and now when i click the top button to get back to the actual timer view and not just this split freeze frame of time. I have my pause timer, which I can now resume and pause again. And yeah, you've just got combinations of these buttons. And the way to get it back to zero is that when the stopwatch is actually stopped and then you press the top button, we're back to zero. Bada bing, bada boom, split time, baby. Uh, yeah, surprisingly complicated for how simple it is. Timer, this one I think actually will be simple. Um, you can set hours top left hold it in to set this one toggles once you're in settings between the options yeah you can set minutes and hours uh, and if it's set to zero then it will just you know full go full circle the maximum time is 24 hours and so if you start at zero it's a 24 hour timer cool um, now i'm going to stop that and hit the button up top to reset, stop and reset. Uh, the only noteworthy thing here is that uh, that top little timer thing, it tells you what the original time was. So if we have a timer for like an hour, set it with these buttons, and then we start the timer, you can see now when you look at the timer, you know how long did it have to begin with. It had one hour, uh, big whoop. <laughs> Now, oh, gotta reset it probably. Reset up here. All right, back down to zero on the timer, zeroed out. Next mode. Oh no, full, oh, we've gone full circle. Uh, the one other thing that I think there is somewhere in here, and I kind of forget where it is right now, is um, power save mode. See if I can get my manual off to the side here. Uh, I'm struggling. Uh, you know what? I don't know if I'm too concerned about it. It's in power save mode to begin with, uh, but basically like if you, if it's in the dark and you don't touch it, it will turn some of the stuff off. Uh, and then once it either sees light or you press a button, it turns back on. Um, so like that's, that's, there, uh, there's this whole manual which has all kinds of stuff about this. Um, but yeah, the power saver thing is kind of handy and I forget where the heck they put it as I record this. Uh, see if I can find that towards the end. Oh, all right. Yeah, let's just move into uh, talking about the last thing, which is rally mode. Okay, everything else has been pretty standard for a Casio watch so far. Nothing crazy. They pretty much all operate like how I've been describing. Um, but let's go to rally. And actually, let's even, well, no, let's start with rally. It's all confusing. So the idea with the rally timer here, I'm in the rally mode now, and what I can do is I have 10 preset timers. Top left button, no, top right, or top, shit, which one is it? 
Yeah. Top right button takes me between the 10 preset timers. When it shipped, it had 10. These are minutes. That's an hour, hour 30, two hours, three hours, five hours off. Uh, this is one minute, 20 minutes. All right. Okay. Now, what this guy does is when we start the timer, which is the bottom right button, it's kind of like the action button here. This is changes between presets. And then, of course, this is your settings button, which we'll get to in a second. But when we start the timer, I'll just do it as off right now. What we get is uh, this countdown thing, basically. So it's going to use that little thing in the middle to show the t seconds decreasing. And the time up here is the seconds until the next minute occurs. So see, it's like 27 seconds. If I come out to the regular timer, see, I got like 20 seconds and it just beeped there because it's trying to basically like tell me that uh, like significant markers are happening. The timer hasn't started yet. This is just the countdown. And so you see now there's 10 seconds, nine seconds, eight seconds. And now this is gonna be the start of the next minute when it hits zero. Two, one. All right, now we have started. Now it's relatively simple because we don't have uh, like a target time thing set. And so all this is really doing is like counting up right now down here on this timer. And what we can do is we can do basically like what I described earlier, split time, where if we hit the bottom, hit the bottom button, we have paused the time and we see like 18 seconds, but in the background, the timer's still going, hit it again. Now we've caught back up to where the timer was, pause it again, 29 seconds. Uh, basically like, yeah, this is the split time feature where you can, you can take the time and think about whether you want to record it or not. And then you can catch up with your existing timer if you'd like. Um, if you do want to record it, when you have paused it, you just hit this top button. So I'm going to hit the top button boop, and it'll make a little beep noise and it just recorded that time. So let's do it again. Three, two, one, happened to work out with a minute there. All right, so that's the beginning of the next whole minute. Like it just, the, the clock just struck whatever time um, I guess 11.49 when I'm recording this in zero seconds, and that's when it started. Apparently that's important for Rally. Um, but so anyway, we're going. And let's say that we don't want this time. So instead of, instead of hitting this button when it's paused, what I'm going to do is when it's running, I'm going to hold the top button. And canceled. We just canceled that time, and it didn't get recorded at all. So we just canceled out of that. One other thing you can do here is say you don't want to wait for this timer to run down to zero and you just want to go while it's ticking down or even at, right after you've pressed it, you can press it again. And then it goes right into starting with the little beep to indicate that it started. Uh, so I'm going to hold this button again to cancel out of that. And just to show you one more time, you can click it and then click it again and you're bam, right into it, no matter whether it's the start of a minute or not. Uh, so let's cancel that again. All right, that's the basic rally timer without uh, the fancy stuff. Now, getting into the fancy stuff. When I turn on top top right, uh, now I'm into the one minute preset timer thing. All right, same deal, press this button to start. And now it's like 40 seconds, but I'm gonna speed it up and just hit this button to get to, get to the start here, start of the timer. We have counting up down here and we have counting down up here. So whatever the time was, which was one minute, this is telling me there's 50 seconds until that time is reached and this is counting up. Okay, great. Same deal where I can pause, do the split time thing I was talking about where, okay, there's the 17 seconds, unpause and the timer's still running. Basically nothing is different, but there's a couple different ways that this can go. Uh, so I think I might unfortunately have to let this one run down the clock here just so you can see what happens. Um, but basically, we can, yeah. When we hit zero, it's basically going to start, or well, it's going to make a noise, but it's going to continue counting. So this one is counting up, this one's counting down, and this is going to continue counting. Let's -a go. Five, four, three, two, one. Bam. And you see, okay. Anyway, so that's the, that's the time that we set, tells us that, okay, that amount of time has elapsed, 
but maybe you're still like driving, I guess. I don't fully understand rally, but let's say that you're still driving or whatever this is in the competitive phase. I don't know, it's confusing to me. Uh, this, you can continue to record your time. Great. Same deal as before, hit that to pause, hit that to unpause, or not pause really, hit that to take like a split time and hit it to undo it. Uh, and then you can still hold this button to just erase everything, but I'm gonna record. So I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna click this button and now that time was recorded. Now, let's do this again, where we start the timer. All right, and we're going up and this is counting down. And now what we can do on this, this run here is let's say that we have finished our run or whatever and we want to record the time. So we would pause it, you know, that's that was our time, I guess. We record it and then it goes into this mode, which essentially is telling us the remainder of what we had. So let me, let me do that again, maybe. So I'm gonna hold, when we're in this mode with the LMT, I can hold the top button again to clear even, but I did record my time because it made the little beep, right? But let's let's do that again. So you can see, all right, we've got, you know, 55 seconds and I'm gonna, well, I'll press the button at like 50 seconds here and you can see, okay. So my time was 10, but this timer is still counting up here. And so let me record my time of 10 seconds, but then it's gonna make this 40 sec, whatever this time is here, basically bigger down on the other one. So it's gonna look like 35 here when I press this button. There we go, so now there's 35 seconds remaining in the timer, or whatever. Uh, so then, yeah, once you're in this mode, you kind of, you can you can leave the mode, but uh, if you want to stay in rally timer, you can only really cancel it. So you hold this top right button to cancel that. But again, that time did get recorded because we indicated to record it, and that's what threw us into the LMT time. And the LMT thing happens when there's less than five minutes. Again, I don't fully understand rally. I don't know why it does that, but when there's less than five minutes remaining up here, it throws you into that LMT thing. So I'm going to go over to this mode now. Ah, I keep thinking it's top left. It's top uh, right. Okay, so that one's set to 20 minutes, right? And so if we go, same exact setup here, but when we stop to record our time, or stop our time there, and then we're going to record that three seconds and five, like, uh, tenths of a second. And now, because we were not under five minutes, it's actually just going to show that time that we recorded. And up here, you see the dots are still blinking there. It's counting down still. And eventually it would get to five and then it would go into LMT mode. I don't even know what LMT stands for. Um, but that's how it works. And uh, yeah, once again, you can't really do anything here except we did record that time, right? That's that's why we're in this mode here. Uh, but now we can exit the mode when we want by holding the top right button. Alrighty. And so that is Rally. Oh, I gotta explain the setting. So yeah, really start button is here and you can then skip the countdown by hitting it again. And then split time or pause time or whatever you want to call it, resume, split again, pause, resume, but it only records when you hit the actual record button. Um, and then if you want to just cancel this whole run, you hold the top right button and then nothing got recorded. Or say you want to record something, you pause or split time that, and then you record, and now we're recording. And then say you want to get out of here, top right button to get back. All right, top left button, let's talk about that one. Hold that bad boy in, and what we've got is the settings. So bottom right lets you tab through all 10 of these presets, uh, including off, which you can't really change anything about. But uh, then, oop. oh yeah, you can go both directions with the top and the bottom button. Uh, but let's say you want that one. Since we're in the settings, we can use the bottom left button to go down into it. And I'm going to reset this to what it started at from the factory, which was 10 minutes. I took, took it down to one just for demonstration purposes, but let's put it back up to 10. Top left button to lock that in. There we go. And so now you see I've got the 10 minutes, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Yeah, not 70. Two hour, three hour, five hour. All right. Now, let's look at the records. Uh, so this is 
I think it stores up to 30 of the records that you've recorded, and when you go after 30, it just deletes the, the oldest one. And so the way that this works is top and bottom buttons, you can scroll through everything. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. This is me messing with it this whole time. has been a bunch of recordings of times. Um, so start with one, right? And then when you press the top left button, you see when that was recorded, the date and the time that that recording was recorded. And yeah, pretty straightforward on that. This thing at the end, which if I hold, actually we can do a shortcut, if I hold, or not hold, if I press top and bottom right side button, takes me right to TTL, which is total time, I guess, uh, or just total is what that stands for, and that's all of the times added up together. So that's all of all of my times collectively right there, including hours at the top. It's a, There's another thing in the manual about how if you start to have so much time, this will scroll between like hours and I don't know, but you'd have to really log a lot of time, but consult the manual if this is like scrolling or whatever. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so that's it. Here's the, you know, all the times. Say you had a time that you wanted to change, what you can do is you can hold the top left button and we're gonna go into the settings. And again, then we can use the mode. It has consistent like user interface once you start to get used to this. So I'm gonna use the mode button and I can toggle between fractions of seconds, second, minutes, hours. And I can say, you know, this time was actually like 11 seconds or 11 seconds, top and bottom to adjust and lock it in. And now it's, uh, now it's 11 seconds, toggle to see the time it was recorded. Other thing I can do if I wanna get rid of a time, say this number 15 time is no good. I just wanna get rid of it, go into the settings top right and bottom right buttons, press them both, and that is now cleared. Very good. Um, and so I, actually it keeps it as zero, zero, so it still exists as number 15, but it uh, is now zero time. And say we wanna get rid of all this stuff in here, like, cause I was demonstrating or something, what we can do is both buttons at the same time, go over to TTL, hold to set. Well, actually, yeah, hold, hold to set. All right. It's all blinking, and now what we can do is not really the only only reason you would enter this setting menu is to delete it. Also, one more time, top and bottom right button both at the same time, clear. Okay, now total time is zero, and guess what? All of the other times are gone. Let's see, there is nothing in here. It's just total time, which is zero because there are no other times. All right, what didn't we do? This is a uh, it's getting to be a long video, huh? My apologies. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Different charge levels. If the charge level drops, it'll have like a low indicator and some functions won't work. Like the, um, at some point, like the light doesn't work or the beeping stops. Um, there's that. We've got the time signal, automatic syncing stuff and automatic. It does automatic daylight savings. It does automatic... Uh, leap year and all that stuff. It really should just kind of handle itself if you put it near a window every night. Um, you can turn off the auto receive if you want to, but probably you don't want to. Uh, we covered checking the latest time. We covered signal strength. I'm just going through the manual here. Um, covered how to do a manual receive by holding the bottom right button. Covered rally mode. It's a, it's a doozy of a mode, but it's actually pretty cool. Uh, presumably it is useful for rallying, like actual rally racing. And I hope that, you know, maybe this or that, that other watch will actually get used for some rally racing one day. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, covered the recall mode and the world time and toggling through the world time. Covered the weird alarms. They're pretty crazy, but all Casios are like that. So if you just look that up, got the watch, stopwatch with the split time. Uh, countdown timer we covered. The illumination with the middle button. You can change the, or the, the amount of time it stays on. You can change it so that it automatically turns on when you turn your wrist. Um, do, do, do. Charging, charging, just looking through the manual here. Sorry, this is adding times and 
video and it's not very like exciting, but I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. This is meant to be a reference video, not like highly entertaining. Uh, all right, read this before you set the time and date. Uh, now we're good on that. You can manually set the time and date, but you probably shouldn't. Uh, da, 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 power saving function. All right, turn power saving on and off. That's what I forgot. All right. Oh, the clock struck noon and uh, or midnight. It's midnight, and uh, look at that. It went <laughs> on camera and everything. It went into the receiving mode. So yeah, if I didn't interrupt it right now, it would uh, attempt to get the signal. But it might take several minutes, and I'm not gonna add even more length to this video. So I am gonna interrupt it. Interrupt it. So anyway, so power saving mode, which I didn't get to before, and the timekeeping mode, which we are in. Hold down. A, which is top left, so we're gonna go to the setting mode, top left, and we're gonna press C until we get there. And so that was all those settings we talked about previously. You can change the time and stuff, but like it sets itself, so you don't need to. There she is. All right, power saving on or off, you want it on, because it doesn't really hurt anything, and it probably saves a considerable amount of power when you know, just for charging purposes and everything. Okay, top left button to exit out of the settings there. Alrighty, yeah. So, with the last minute here, what I'm gonna do is go over the, the non-normal function of this watch and do a nice, uh, do a little recap again. So, once again, rally mode, very different. Uh, top left, you can set the things but at the, if you press the top right, you can toggle between these preset times. And basically those preset times are countdowns. And so if I select this 10, 10, that's 10 minutes. And then I hit this button, it starts the timer, except it doesn't. It's starting a countdown to the timer so that it syncs up with the start of the next full minute. Uh, and it beeps along the way, like the 20 and the 10 second mark. And then it beeps even more when it gets down to 10 seconds so that you like are paying attention to it and you see like the, the starting and actually it also does here we'll let it hit all the way down here it does the cool like little animation with the, the countdown thing and then the timer starts and the top timer see it went down to nine that's nine minutes remaining uh, and my timer here is counting up and if i want to pause can do that but the timer is still running in the background and click it again back to the timer and I can do that, you know, infinite times and nothing is being recorded here. This is just me pausing the time and then going back to the timer and see it says 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. It's going to say like 30 when I hit this button again. There it is, 30. Um, so yeah, that's the timer and that's the countdown timer. And then really your only option when this is happening, once it's started, is when you want to actually record your time. And so say I like that time, that's when I finished. I'm gonna hit the top button, boom, just recorded it. And now it's in a mode where it will show the remaining time, which is nine minutes. And it shows the time that I recorded up until then. And the way to get out of that is to hold the top right button. Boop. But you can see, and so now we're back and we can do it all again. Uh, but then you can see over in the recorded time, I have one record, which is the time that I just recorded. And then it also shows total time, which is the same time, because there's only one time. And then I can get in here and just delete it. So hold that, press both of these buttons, clear. Now we're back to zero, no records. Yep, world time, scroll through the list, pick the one you like, pick your favorite. Alarm, pretty straightforward, normal on Casio, stopwatches, normal, timer, normal. All right. Well, I'm out of things to talk about on this bad boy. Um, but yeah, that, so def the rally timer, I don't fully understand, but uh, presumably like you can set the time that it's, I guess, supposed to take to finish the stage, right? And then once you have finished it, you record your time and then it will tell you the, the remaining time, or maybe you're supposed to finish it in under that time and then it tells you the remaining time. When I look at the manual here, it has something about like, once you record the time, it says road section non-competitive. So I guess you have like 50 minutes and part of that is driving to the next chunk of the course, which is the road section, which is non-competitive. 
and part of it is this what it calls special stage competitive section i don't know i don't fully understand all that but what i do know is how the timer works and it starts on the minute and it counts up on the big screen and then the little screen is counting down and when the countdown hits zero it'll flash and beep at you and continue to count and at any point you can you know record your time basically uh and then you start it again and you do it all over yeah and uh i don't think see there was a time where i thought you could like have the rally run into like one into the next or something like that um but no i don't i don't think that would work like that right no i don't think so i don't think right like if i start this and then i end it and record I can't do anything. No, I for I kind of thought like those ten stages would all be used like chain daisy chain together, but I don't think that's the case. I think you just use them separately, and you have ten different time choices that are presets that you can that can have at your disposal. <sighs> but yeah, anyway, to to recap this all, these are like the two watches ever that have a rally mode. Um. You know, this one was like the kind of cheaper, dorkier looking model. Still quite respectable. Solar, world time, multi, band six, atomic, radio syncing or whatever. Uh, oh, this one is also 200. Yeah, this is a good one. This is, I thought it was 100 meter water resist, but it says 200 up there. Or 20 bar, 200 meter. Um, but yeah, it's all a little watch. Definitely lots of functions. Uh, super cool. This one, this one's a nice watch. This one is like, and they don't sell this one anymore either, but it's not that fancy. And this one that I have is also not pristine. This guy though is pristine and beautiful and I just love it. It has a cool look to it. It's got all this G-Shock like funness going on with the big lettering and the big bold design and the tough looking thing. And especially I love this engraving of the, the mud the mud mole guy, I don't know what his name is, with the little dish and the drill thing. Um, Casio has a lot of history with like, uh, you know, well, of course these G-Shocks being tough and everything, but there there was a lot of like uh, like military use of, of these two with like, basically they, I guess, replaced the like really expensive high-end uh, mechanical watches that the military used to use because there were no digital watches. And so they had really high end mechanical watches like for the Navy SEALs or whatever. And then as soon as they were like, Oh, this watch has a, has an illuminated display when you press a button and it keeps digital time and it's super durable. Like, yeah, they were like, Oh yeah, we want that. So yeah, love this watch. Super good condition or condition. Uh, you cannot find them like this anymore. So I just, I thought this was really cool. And again, it is one of the only watches in the world, one of two that I'm aware of. Maybe there's some other weird specialty ones that have a rally mode, which I think is dope. Just, just cool. All right. Well, with that, we are ending the video. Uh, if anyone is watching this who wasn't the recipient of this watch, hopefully this was helpful. Kind of went over the features and everything, although I am long-winded as hell i admit it this is a reference video it's not meant to entertain it's just meant to get the details across make you not have to sit here and read like a 20 10 10 i guess it's just 10 10 page manual but it's very technical and stuff so i don't know i thought it was cool especially explaining rally mode because i haven't seen a solid explanation for that on the internet previously um but yeah cool so that's the mud man